The metal content and fineness of coins is fixed by law. Here, metal is being weighed out for the making of pennies. A single penny weighs 48 grains and contains 95% copper, alloyed with 5% tin and zinc. Carefully weighed out in small units, the alloys are placed in a separate box, which will put in the melting crucible along with the pigs of pure copper. Each step is supervised by trained men. Their accurate work has built up over the years the unshakable confidence of the people in the money of their government. The carefully measured amounts of copper, tin, and zinc are ready for the furnace but it is not stoked with metal haphazardly. The carefully measured portions are added exactly as they arrive from the weighing room. One at a time, the loader puts in the pure copper, tin, and zinc. Copper pigs in the furnace, and the alloy metals added. The door to the furnace is closed, leaving only a small hole for observation during the melting, and later for pouring out the molten metal. The electricity is turned on. Flames and vapor belch forth, and the temperature is carefully watched as these furnaces start their work of fusing a strong, long-wearing alloy. During the melting, the entire furnace rocks to and fro to aid in the mixing. The employees of the Mint maintain a constant check on the coins they make, keeping them of uniformly high standard. When the melting has been completed, the delicate operation of tapping the furnace gets underway. Sputtering and sparking, the molten metal runs direct from the furnace into a carrier. This is transferred immediately to a rack where the molten metal is poured into special form. These molds form ingots of copper alloy 20 inches long. The metal quickly becomes solid and a workman breaks the form from around the ingot and gives it a steaming bath and a chemical solution. These ingots come from the bath, dull and rough finished. They are not ready for the punch presses yet. The thick slabs must pass between these powerful rolls 22 times. From a dull ingot 20 inches long, these operations produce a gleaming ribbon over 35 feet long. At the preliminary rolling, the strips pass to the finishing mill, and the heavy slabs have become the microscopically exact thickness for a coin. The blanking press. Here blank coins are cut out of the strips as easily as a housewife cuts out cookies from batter. The blanks, approximately coin size, are called planchets. After the planchets have been stamped from the strip, the remainder is returned to the furnaces for remelting. Nothing is wasted. All planchets pass onto the annealing ovens, for when they come from the blanking press, the blanks are too brittle to take a good impression. In these large ovens, they are softened by being reheated under carefully controlled conditions. Silver planchets, except those for dimes, are checked individually for weight. Then the planchets go to the tumbling barrels, where they are violently swirled around in a solution of warm water containing cream of tartar and soap bar. Cream of tartar has been found to be the most effective buffer for planchets. It does its work smoothly, leaving the blanks with a gleaming polish after they have been turned at high speed in these tumbling vats. With no more ceremony than a concrete mixer disgorging a load of cement, these barrels pour out their load of burnished metal, a brilliant cascade of shimmering copper. Now the blanks are ready for the last operation, the one which will turn them into money. Here's a bank of stamping presses in the Philadelphia Mint. They are capable of turning out over 4 million coins in a 24-hour day. <laughs> 